Okay, so the order of this video is the same order to which I choreographed the meal. You get me? Like I did some things and then I went and started something else, then I started something else, then I came back to the first thing and then I went to the next thing and then I started something else. You know how that goes? Yeah, real time cooking. Well, I just kept it in that flow for this video. Oh, I rhymed. Okay, let's start with mashed potatoes. All right, so I chopped up, what, six or seven russet potatoes in half, dropped them in the iPod, added one and a half cups of water, locked on the lid, turned the steam release handle to ceiling, and then I'm gonna use the manual button to set the iPod to high pressure, which it automatically does, and then use the minus key to adjust the cooking da time down to four minutes. All right, in my second iPod, <laughs> yeah, I actually have three. <laughs> Anyways, in my second iPod, I'm gonna water saute the vegetables for the meatless loaf. So that was two garlic cloves, a medium onion, finely diced, and two celery stalks, finely diced. And then what I, li what I like to do is just use the saute mode to heat up the inner pot and saute those vegetables. I like to let the pan get a little dry and then add just enough water to cover the bottom of the pot and then cook the onions until, they, until they're semi-translucent. And then once they're tender, then I'm going to move on to the next part. Okay, so here are my soy curls. I, I actually kept all the dry soy curl crusts from the bottom of my 12 pound bag in, in a separate bag here and I just keep these in the freezer and I'm using all that soy curl dust to be part of my filler for this meatless loaf. So I've got one and a half cups of soy curl cr dust, one and three fourths cup of vegetable broth, a half a teaspoon of cracked rosemary, half a teaspoon of thyme, and half a teaspoon of dry sage, and two teaspoons of dried parsley, and then an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. And those are all the spices that go in. And then what I, I just kept the saute mode on here just long enough to uh, help that those soy curls soak up that broth. Then I pulled the inner pot out to let it cool. I added one and a half cups of rolled oats, one cup of blended tofu, which was like a little bit of firm and a little bit of silk and just blended up in the Nutribullet, three tablespoons of soy sauce or tamari, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, I use stone ground, and then two tablespoons of organic ketchup. And then I stirred that up. Now, now we're done. I've put everything in the meatless loaf that needs to go in there. I gave that a good stir. And then I got out my silicone loaf pan and dumped everything in there. See, I didn't have to use any oil. Yay! I've got the oven pre preheated to 375 degrees, and I'm gonna pop this lentil loaf in there for 25 minutes. It's gonna be a total of 55 to 60 minutes that we're gonna cook the loaf, but you'll see what I do about halfway through. Okay, now let's make the creamy brown gravy. All right, this is my way of making lump-free gravy. I've got two cups of vegetable broth, a tablespoon of tamari. Now the McDougal recipe calls for two tablespoons of tahini, but I did not have two tablespoons. I almost had one tablespoon worth of tahini, so I just stopped right there. A fourth cup of flour. You can use rice flour or whole wheat pastry flour, and then a little pinch of black pepper. And then in my Nutribullet, I need a Nutribullet sound, woot woot, uh, then I blended everything up. Da, da, da. I gave that a like, I don't know, eight seconds to blend up the flour to ensure I would not have any lumps. And then I'm just gonna move that to a saucepan. And when it comes time, when it's almost time for dinner, then I'm gonna heat that up until it's thick. I cleaned out the inner pot that had the meatloaf vegetables in it and now I've added one cup of water to it, dropped the strainer in there, chopped up some broccoli, and then that's ready to go later. I'm going to steam that when it's almost time. Okay, now the, now the loaf is baked for 25 minutes. I pull it out. I drizzle some ketchup over the top as much as you want to put on your loaf. I like to kind of see the loaf through the ketchup. 
That's just the way I like to roll. And then I'm popping that back into the oven to go another 25 minutes. Now I'll tell you, my lentil pan was a little too thick. When you go to make this, try making it in like your, your nine by nine pan if you like a chewier, drier loaf. Okay, now my potatoes are ready. So with this water at the bottom of the pot, you can choose to use it to blend the potatoes or drain some of it off or drain it all off. It's completely up to you. I drained mo most of it off and then I'm gonna add unsweetened plain soy milk to cream up my mashed potatoes. So with my little Breville motor with the ricer attachment, I'm just running it through the potatoes a couple of rounds to get my potatoes nice and creamy. And then I'm gonna pour on some unsweetened plain soy milk, give that a stir. You're welcome to season your mashed potatoes with salt and pepper. I'm leaving these plain and let everybody season their own. Okay, now for the brown gravy part two. I'm just heating this gravy over medium high heat. It took about eight minutes to get it thick. And I just used a whisk to keep stirring, to keep that flour off the bottom of the pan. And then just to see, you know, where my thickness was, I used a spoon. See, it looks very saucy and thin, but um, I kind of do that old method of checking your jelly. If you've ever done any canning and you wanna know if your jelly's thick enough yet, I just run my finger across the spoon and if I've got a nice solid line, then I know I'm, you know, I'm in good, good hands. Look, the loaf is done. Oh, look how pretty, yay. Okay, now it's time to do the broccoli. That's the last thing I like to do. So I'm using the steam function on the iPod. Uh, this is my new iPod. If I hit the steam button again, it cancels the keep warm mode. And I just steamed that up for one minute and it was ready. Okay, it's dinner time. I just jumped. Let's imagine that the, the broccoli's done. Okay, so now it's time to serve it up. I've called the family down. Here's, here it is, the moment of truth. Now, it looks wet because it is a little wet, but man, is this meatloaf awesome. The next time I make this, and I will make it again, I'm going to use my 9x9 nine nine cornbread pan just to have a drier meatloaf because that's what I like. That's what I know. If you are used to a moister meatloaf, then please go for it in a regular loaf pan. You, it, it will be right up your alley. Okay, now it's gravy time. Oh yeah, time to lay on that beautiful gravy. Oh yeah, girl. Mm. Oh yeah, let's do it again. Oh yeah. Oh. Let's put a little on that meatloaf. Just a little, just a little bit. Look how pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh. Okay, now it's time to hear what the family thought. Oh. All right, what do y'all think? All right, taste it. It's pretty good. You taste blue, 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 blue. It's delicious. Is it? You like the meatloaf? It's very good, yes. Oh my gosh. I thought it was going to be like gummy mm -mm. or something weird. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. I pretty good. The gravy uh -huh. and the meatloaf. Are good. It can be a little drier, or maybe that's just my expectation. Mm. No, it's a little, you know. No, I, I, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. It's moist. Yeah, it's moist. It has the flavor of a meatloaf. Mm -hmm. It's just not as dry as a meatloaf. All right, gravy. I haven't tested that yet. Mm. The it's gravy good. is good with the broccoli. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maggie likes the gravy. I put salt and pepper on it, but. Yeah. All of it. But the but the mm. but the flavor is good. Okay, the gravy's good. The <gasps> gravy. I'm gonna dip my broccoli in the gravy. Max, what'd you say about the gravy? It's good. Mm. You just need the salt. You want a little salt? No pepper. We're not we're not salt free here in this house. <laughs> this is good. We can't live without salt. I was worried. Mmm. Oh yeah. Thumbs up, for sure. Thumbs yeah. up. Thumbs up. Pork up. I like this better than the um, the, the prefab stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Mmm. 
He's referring to Gardein's meatless patties. Meatloaf patties, you see those? Meatloaf slices or whatever. Mm -hmm. Meat. I mean, those are good, but... Those are good in a pinch. They're a little heavy. And they're, you know, processed, so... Yeah. Oh, this is good. Okay. Watch. Please subscribe. Bye.